Hey, 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 you guys. Welcome to Talk About It Thursdays. I am your host, Karen Bailey. Let me know when you guys are on. I would love to say hello to you guys. You guys, last week, we talked about restricted access, how we have to be careful about who we let get, co get close to us, who we allow uh, into our personal space, you know, that we should guard our peace uh, above everything. So I hope you guys got something out of last week's restricted access. We're going to go ahead and get started for today, you guys. This topic is, is really close to my heart, and it's called Not By Sight. And what I want to talk about today is walking by faith and not by sight. And I know that sounds easy. That sounds like, you know, a cliche, but it's not. It's something that you have to grow into. It's something that you have to really want you know, for your life. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'll give you guys another minute and then we'll get started. If you've never asked God to do something for you, ask him. He's just waiting to hear from you. That thing that you think is impossible right now, that thing that everybody tells you you just have to live with, God is the only one that can solve it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, y'all, let's get started. All right, not by sight. Our daily walk is guided, you guys, by either what we see or what we believe. And life is all things. Frankie Beverly and Mays summed it up. Life is joy, life is pain, life is sunshine, and life is rain all at the same time or at different seasons. So we have to understand we can't always be moved by what we see. We can't always make decisions based off what we see. So not by sight. Second Corinthians 5 and 7, for we live by faith, which means to walk by faith, not by sight. Number one, we live by believing and not seeing. Number two, it's what we trust in, but don't yet see that keeps us going. It's not those things that are right in front of us when times are really hard, when we're struggling, when we're searching for answers. It's always what you can't see. It's always something higher than you that's going to give you the answer. And that's what gives you the strength to keep going. And some of our best teachers in life, you guys, are experience, wisdom, and our failures. And this life experience will teach you that everything we see can't always be trusted. Everything we see is not always the truth, you guys. And experience is the best teacher for that. We've all been fooled by the okie doke at one time in our life. There's an old song that says everybody plays the fool. Sometimes we've all played the fool at least once or twice in our life. But experience teaches us not to be fooled by the same thing over and over again. Wisdom teaches us to watch, wait, and pray. Wisdom will teach you when to move and when not to move because you understand 
that God is always working. Even when you can't see him, even when you can't trace what he's doing, wisdom will teach you to just stand back, pray about it, wait on God. And failures, they teach us that just because we see something or just because we want something doesn't mean we always get what we want. So failure is what humbles us and lets us know that you can't just have anything and everything that you want. You know, one thing about spoiling a child, when you spoil a child, you actually handicap that child. God is not going to handicap us. He allows us to have wins and he allows us to have losses because he wants us to know what it is to be um, content in the state that you're in. Be content with not always having everything that, to, that you set your eyes on. He wants you to be content in what he's already done in your life. And walking by faith simply means believing in God's promises. But you got to know what God promises us in order to believe it. That's why you have to spend time in your word. That's why you have to spend time strengthening that inner man. Everything is not about your outer appearance, you guys. It is so important that you're just as strong, just as beautiful, just as is is amazing on the inside as you are on the outside. Because even though we may not see God working right now, we have to learn to trust him and believe that he's preparing us for a blessing and a relief from whatever we're going through. That's the whole point of, of praying is just believing that God has an end to whatever suffering you're going through, that, that there's going to be a better day you know, ahead of us. That's why we pray. That's why we trust in God. That's why we worship God. Because God promises us that things will get better, that things will change, and that it won't always be like this. Second Corinthians 4 and 18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. And there's two reasons why we do that. One, because whatever we see is temporary in this life. Hey, Latissa. And two, what you cannot see is always what's eternal in this life. So just think about all the times that you were upset, that you were worried, that you had lost hope, couldn't sleep at night. Think about all those things just from your past that just took you through made you want to give up, made you feel like, you know what, my life is not going to get any better. And then look at where you are now. God brought you through that because that situation was temporary. It may not have felt temporary. Sometimes you can go through something so bad, it seems like the night will never end. But God promises that joy will come in the morning. And he always keeps his word. And then think back on times when God made a way out of no way. You have no idea how God did it. You have no idea how you got past that situation. Or you have no idea how you were able to raise those kids all by yourself and still keep your sanity, still keep those kids in school, some of them even going to college and graduating. Nobody did that but God. God made a way. He opened the doors for you. He was the one that showed favor on your life. See, that's the eternal thing because you will always have that on the inside. You'll always have that, that trust and that love for God because when you think back on how far he's brought you and when you think back, hey, Rashida, when you think back on how you don't even understand how you did what you did, it'll bring tears to your eyes because you got to recognize that there was something working in your life more than you. Because a lot of us didn't have family support like we should have. A lot of us didn't have money. A lot of us didn't, you know, have resources. But God still did it. See, those are the things that are eternal. Because of those things, you will always have a love for God, no matter how old you are. And you'll always have those memories of how God made a way when there was no way. Those things are eternal. So what's walking by sight, you guys? 
Walking by sight is when, number one, you operate according to what you see and you believe what you see, no matter what it is. Everything that you see on the news, everything that you see on social media gets you all worked up, all upset. You can't stop talking about it. That's because you're walking by sight. Hey, Chiquita. Number two, when you start operating off of what you know, what you've learned, your own ability, your own wisdom, then you're walking by sight. Number three, when you operating on outer sight, not inner sight, when you don't use your spirit, man, when, when you're ignoring God, when he's unctioning you to do some things, when he's trying to warn you about some things, you're walking by sight because God will always try to warn you. God will always try to let you know something is not quite right, but he's not going to force you to change your mind. But when you're operating by sight, you're going to do what you want to do because you don't see that there is a problem. That's because you're walking by sight. Four, when you're operating in your emotions, your emotions make you do all kinds of things. Your emotions are up one minute, down the next. You don't feel like doing this this minute. Next minute, you're doing everything. You're walking by sight. Six, when you're worrying. When you're worrying about things, you're walking by sight. When you real, really think that there's no way to get out of this, no way to get out of that, and you haven't exhausted all the possibilities, or maybe you have exhausted all the worldly possibilities, but you haven't even called on God. You haven't even prayed about it, but you're already giving up and feeling like your life is not going to get better. Number seven, being double-minded. When you're double-minded in all your ways, you're unstable. When one minute you want, you say you're going to do this, and then the next minute you flip over and do something else, or people can sway you and make you change your mind and com convince you to do something different than, you than you've already made up your mind to do, then you're double-minded because you can't stand on a decision. You can't make up your own mind for yourself. Or you don't trust your own decision making. Hey, Hannah, you don't trust yourself. Then you're walking by sight. Eight, when you're a people pleaser, when you're always trying to be Miss Popular or always trying to stay in everybody's good graces or always trying not to make people mad or always uh, worrying about what other people think. I used to be her. So I know about that. I know about that. It will keep you on edge all the time. It'll keep you worried that you're not doing the right thing. It'll make you wonder if you're good enough. It'll make you feel like, well, well, you know, I need to ask them before I do anything. You're an adult. You have your own mind. Stop trying to make everybody happy. That is not your job. That is not your assignment. Your assignment in life is to get your own life right. And you need to make your own decisions because at the end of the day, who's going to suffer the consequences but you? So you might as well make your own decisions if you're the ones that's got to deal with the aftermath of it. So people pleasers tend to walk by sight because they're always looking to see how people are, are looking at them or, or if they're making eyes or, or how they're responding to what they're doing because they're insecure. Nine. Always looking for a worldly or a physical way to look or feel better. You know, there's nothing wrong with if you want to have some surgery for yourself, but don't do it to make you feel better about yourself. Don't, don't hate the way you are now trying to look like everybody else and trying to compete with everybody else. You know, that's only temporary. Most people that do that for that reason, they end up doing more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. It's never enough because there's a void there they're trying to fill by changing the way they look or, or holding on to something physical or something worldly, you know, to try to make them feel good on the inside when that's not going to fix what's wrong with you. That's not going to gonna fix the void that's inside of you. You need to talk to God and find out. What is it that makes me feel like I'm not good enough? What is it that 
I don't feel good? What is it that I don't like anything about myself? God will show you where that root came from and he will show you how to heal from that. But holding on to worldly things, changing the way you look on the outside is all going to be a charade. Because on the inside, sweetie, you're still going to be broke. You're still going to be hurting. You're still going to be sad. And that's why you see some of these women who have done all of these surgeries and they're still not happy because they didn't fix anything. They just changed their outer appearance. 10. Disappointments throw you off track. If every time you get disappointed, you throw in the towel and you want to quit or you change your mind about what you were planning on doing, you're walking by sight. And number 11, if you're easily distracted. You know, people that walk by faith, don't get me wrong, we're human, we're all human, but when you're focused when you know where you're trying to go, when you're determined to get there, a lot of things that you don't tolerate. A lot, a lot of times you, you ignore a lot of things when you're trying to walk by faith because the enemy is always going to throw something at you and he knows your weakness. He knows what you like. He knows what upsets you. He knows what throws you off track. So when you're walking by sight alone, it's very easy to get distracted. So let's talk about walking by faith, what that is. Number one, you stay positive in your thoughts and your actions, even when the situation that you're dealing with is not ideal, or it may even be a negative situation. You know, one thing I'm learning, you know, when you deal with the public, miserable people, they want to make you miserable. And it's not even about you sometimes. Sometimes people just can't stand that light in you and that joy in you. And they're looking for ways to kind of dim your light a little bit or just put it out all together. But when you're walking by faith, you understand that it's not that person. That's the enemy trying to take my joy away. And I'm not going to allow it. I'm not going to pay attention to that. Say what you want to say. You're not going to ruin my mood today. And that's when you're walking by faith because you know this too shall pass. I don't have time to worry about that. My peace is too important to me. Number two, when you're not being controlled by your emotions. People who walk by faith are thinkers. You have to be a thinker in this world because everything is aimed at getting an emotional response from you. Everything is aimed at getting you excited, getting you mad, uh, or something like that nature. It's, it's trying to invoke a response from you. So you have to learn how to control your emotions and know when to, to move and when not to move. Because our emotions can't be trusted, you guys. Just because something upsets you doesn't mean that you have to act out. Just because you don't agree with something doesn't mean that you got to fight against it or, or start an argument with somebody. When you're walking by faith, you learn to be a thinker and ask yourself, is this even worth my time? Is this worth allowing this situation or what somebody said or what somebody did to disturb my peace, is it worth it for me to get into this? Is this person the kind of person that's even going to listen? You know, you start thinking about those things before you put yourself in situations when you're walking by faith. Because you realize you have so much to lose because it took so much for you to get to that place of peace that you're in right now. I am so protective of my peace. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me because I'm very careful um, and, and I'm very watchful about who I allow around me now because I know what it took to get to where I am now. I know what it took to be able to smile all day. I know what it took to not be crying and, and crying myself to sleep. I know what it took to be a positive light for other people. It costs you. It costs you a lot. And you have to go through a lot of pain and a lot of suffering to get to that point where God puts you on this level. And it's not like you're better than anybody else, but a lot of stuff don't phase you because you've already been through worse than that. 
you know, you almost laughing on the inside. Like, did they think that was going to bother me? They don't have a clue what I done already been through. I don't walk through the fire. You know, I, I, I know what abuse is. I know what being mistreated is. You know, they thinking their little words are going to bother me. They're thinking, you know, because they don't, you know, support me or this, that, and the other, or they make little comments that's going to bother me. They don't know what I've already gone through. And see, that's why God refines you in the fire because people think that the way you are now is the way you've always been. They don't remember or they don't know the hell that you had to walk through to get to where you are now. You look nice now. You look nice now, but they don't know what you went through. They don't remember those times when you look like, you know, every, every second you were about to break down and lose your mind. They don't know that person. So this is why we can't afford to be controlled by our emotions because we've, we've gone through too much. We've gone through too much and we have too much to lose. So we have to let small thinking people stay on their level. And you have to realize you're above that because you've been through too much. God has brought you too far for you to get on the level with other people that are trying to provoke your emotions. So you have to have some control. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, a person that can't control themselves is like a city without walls. You've got to have control over this mouth, over this mind, you know, and what you even listen to and definitely what you do. And that's a person that's walking by faith because you know that you have too much to lose. So you're going to be more careful than most people. Four, we trust the direction of the Holy Spirit, even when you don't feel like doing something. You know, one of the best things you can do is just listen and just do. Because God never tells you to do anything that's not going to bless somebody. And nine times out of ten, it's going to bless you as well. So it's just better to do it when God says, you know, go speak a kind word or go give that person a hug. You know, you see somebody hurting. You don't have to know everything about them to comfort them. You don't have to know everything about somebody to say a kind word to them or let them know, hey, I see you going through. I know you don't know me, but just know that I'm praying for you. And it's so funny. Um, This week, it has been that kind of week for me at work. You know, I, I put a post on Facebook because I was just so moved. Uh, Just the different patients that I talked to you guys and some of them I had to give them some really really bad news this weekend and that's always hard for me that's always hard for me but just the way they handled the news and the fact that every last one of them said the same thing they said you know what I'm putting it in God's hand I got to trust God. He ain't never let me down. So whatever God's will is for my life. You know, they were saying things like that. I said, oh my God, even in the midst of the kind of news that I was given, that's what walking by faith is. No matter what that situation is that is coming to your life, that's standing up in front of you, that's threatening you, that's telling you that God is not with you, you have to stand firm on your faith and say, you know what, whatever this is, if God's got me going through it, he's got me doing it for a reason. And he's got something better for me on the other side. Number five, self-control, restraint. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that you do it. That's walking by faith. You know, a lot of times we have the upper hand because we know how we can pay people back. We know how we can make other people's lives difficult that are being ugly to us or trying to be mean to us. But it takes a person to walk by faith that said, you know what, I could do that to her or I could pay her back for that or I could mess this up for her. But that's not who I am. God don't want me to do that. God wants me to keep it moving. That's when you're walking by faith. When you could do something and really deal with somebody, but yet you take the high road, you take God's road and say, you know what, God, I pray for her or I pray for him. 
And I'm not even going to address that. I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to let that go. That's when you're walking by faith. Number six, every day, no matter what you have to do, you have a quiet confidence inside of you that God is good and that he's not withholding goodness from you just because of your situation. But he's working things out for your good, just like he says in his words. I want to say Roman 8 and 28, where he says all things are working for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. It may not look good right now. There's been some things in my life, and I, I probably shared this with you guys before, some things in my life. I mean, I was boo and crying, trying to figure out why in the world is God letting this happen to me? I look back at those things now and I understand what it says when it says it was good for me to have been afflicted. And I want to say that's in Psalms and I can't remember if it's 114 or something like that where it says it's good for me because I learned from those things. I learned from the pain. And if I had not gone through some of the stuff that I went through, I really wouldn't be the same person I am now. And I like the person I am now. I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. I don't do everything right. But I like who I'm becoming. And this is the first time in my life I can say, I like who I'm becoming. It doesn't matter if nobody else likes me. It doesn't matter what anybody else's opinion is. I like the woman I'm becoming because I'm getting closer to God and I'm, I'm doing things not for other people. I'm living my life, my best life, my life according to the way God had it planned for me and not worrying about anything else. So we have to remember that even when it doesn't look good, we have to honestly believe in our heart that God means what he says. If he says all things are working together, for the good, that means the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hold your head up and realize, okay, this is bad. It feels bad. I don't like it. Lord, please hurry up and take it away. But I know you're working it for my good. Something good is going to come out of this. Number seven, walking by faith doesn't come naturally, you guys. It has to be learned. And you learn because you go from victory to victory as God is is taking you through life and helping you through situations you start desiring more to walk by faith because you know what it's like to have God come in and take care of you you know what it's like to call on God and have God answer your prayers hey Kinsley and so over time over a lifetime you learn how to recognize God's voice and you learn how to follow God's voice. It's not something that just comes natural. It's not something that you're taught. It's something you have to learn on your own just from the situations in life that you go through and just learning to lean and depend on God. And number nine, when you're walking by faith, you're learning how to wait on God. Because as we all know, God doesn't always say yes to us. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's you got to wait. And you got to learn how to wait on God without an attitude. You got to learn how to wait on God without being jealous of everybody else. You got to learn how to wait on God and just wait your turn. You know, a lot of things that you're asking for, you're not even ready for. And so let God work on you while you're waiting. You know, use that downtime to kind of get yourself together. Hey, Shawana, use that time to get yourself together. When God tells you to wait on something, Wait on it, but wait with a grateful heart because a lot of times if you're having to wait, there's got to be a reason for it. Something, something is not where it needs to be if you don't get it right now. And so how do you know if you're walking by faith and not by sight? Number one, you recognize that you're human and you forgive yourself. When you're walking by faith, you understand that we're in these fleshly bodies. We have these carnal minds and things are going to happen. And you don't sit up and dwell on that and, and get in your own little pity party about it. You don't have time for that because life waits for nobody, you guys. So you got to learn 
that you're human and you're going to make mistakes. That's what grace and mercy is there for. So when you're walking by faith, you recognize I'm human. I'm going to try not to do that again. I hate I did that. God, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to do better. And then you keep it moving. You don't have time to dwell on people. You stop putting people on a pedestal. You know, this this is a time in my life that... I'm, okay, sorry, you guys. This weather's messing with my signal out here. But this is a time in my life where I'm really learning to pay attention to people and, and stop expecting so much out of people. Because sometimes we put people up on a pedestal and then when they don't perform uh, like we expect them to or, or when they make a mistake then it just shatters us. We've got to stop doing that. We got to recognize that people are just people and we got to learn to forgive them and not hold grudges with them. You know, they've got their own things about their life that they got to work out. So, you know, learn to stop putting people up so high. Stop expecting people to be superhuman and just understand everybody makes mistakes and that'll keep you from getting disappointed all the time. And I don't care what title they hold. They are still just human beings made in flesh, made of flesh and blood, just like we are. And when you're walking by faith, you learn that nobody's perfect but God. So therefore, I'm not surprised by what anybody does nowadays. Number three, you don't dwell on the past when you're walking by faith. If you're still stuck on your past, if you're still complaining and, and making excuses because of what happened to you in the past, you're walking by sight. People that walk by faith realize the past has a purpose and it's meant to be a stepping stone. I got to keep moving forward. When you have that mindset, you're walking by faith. Number four, you acknowledge and learn from your failures. If you're the one that's making excuses for why you messed up and it's everybody else's fault and, and if I'd had this or if I'd had this, if they had helped me, this, that, and the other, you're walking by sight. But if you can acknowledge and learn from your failures and you look for the lessons in your mistakes instead of feeling sorry for yourself, then you're walking by faith. Number five, if pleasing God is more important than pleasing people, you're walking by faith. Number six, you no longer desire popularity. Popularity means nothing to me. I want to be liked by everybody, but I know that that's not possible. And you have to understand it's a big responsibility that comes with popularity. Everybody's got their eyes on you. That means everybody's also judging you. So be careful about wanting to be that person that's super popular. That means that you're opening yourself to be judged by a whole lot of people that don't have a right to judge you. And you're going to start listening to a whole lot of opinions that you really don't need to be listening to. Number seven, you learn to value your solitude and your peaceful moments. If you are uncomfortable being by yourself, if you are uncomfortable with quiet time to meditate, if you are always looking for that next thing, trying to run and be here, be there, you're walking by sight. When you are walking by faith, you crave those quiet times because in those quiet times in your meditation, that's when you really can hear from God. That's when you can start telling God everything that's going on in your life and how you feel about it. And you can pour out and you can cry and you can ask God for strength. That solitude is so valuable when you're walking with God because you look for those moments because you know that's like plugging you into an electric socket, you know, like your battery is dead. When you plug in and you start talking to God and you worship God and you give all those problems to God and cry your eyes out, when you unplug and you get back up, you're a different person. That's when you're walking by faith because you look for those times where you can plug in and talk to God because that's where your strength comes from. That's where your healing comes from. Number eight, when you're walking by faith, your peace is non-negotiable. I don't care who it is. I don't care how long you've known them. I don't care how much you say you love them. When you're walking by faith, 
Peace is the most valuable commodity you could possibly have. And you understand that your peace is so important because you having peace in your heart and your mind and in your spirit is what gives you that glow about yourself. That's what gives you the ability to help other people. That's what gives you the ability to discern. You know, when when you don't have peace in your life, when everything's up in the air, you can't discern, you can't hear from God like you need to. You can't hear God warning you about this person, that person. Don't do this. Don't do that. So all of that's going to be off when you don't have your peace. So a person that's walking by faith, they want to have their stuff together because they already know that the enemy don't like them. They already know somebody has their whole day set up so they can see if they can disturb your peace. They want you as miserable as they are. So when you are walking by faith, your peace is non-negotiable. I tell them, kids, y'all better go on somewhere. I need a minute. I'll tell that husband, you better go on. I need some time. I need some time. Tell that job, I need some days off. Do what you got to do to preserve your peace because that keeps you on point, you guys. That keeps you sharp. And walking in this world that we're walking in, you guys, we got to stay sharp because it's too much coming at us, too many lies coming at us, too many manipulators coming at us, too many tricksters coming at us. And especially when you're kind-hearted, it's just like they can't wait to get to you to try to see what they can get from you and what they what they can trick you into. So you need to have your peace. That's why it's so important, you guys, to get your rest. And I thank you guys for letting me have my vacation time last week. I got my rest and I feel so good. And simply because I feel sharp, I feel like I'm back on point. And you got to recognize when your battery is being drained. And I felt like I needed to recharge for a little bit. So you got to understand your peace is, your peace has to be non-negotiable because if you play pity pat with the devil oh he'll play with you if if you allow people to keep crossing that line and and keep disturbing you they're gonna keep doing it they have no respect for you they have no respect for you because one thing about it people will do what you allow them to do they will and as soon as you allow them to do a little bit, they're going to try a little bit more. And then next time they're going to try a little bit more. That's why we talked about setting boundaries, you guys. That preserves your peace. You can't worry about who don't like it. You don't worry about who's mad about it. They will get over it. Your peace is too valuable. The peace is non-negotiable. Number nine, com compassion and kindness are genuine when it comes from you and your motives are pure without wanting anything in return. That's when you know you're walking by faith. When when you can do something for somebody and you ain't got to brag about it on Facebook or on uh, Instagram or on whatever, when you can do something just because that's what was in your heart to do, just because you want to put a smile on somebody's face. That's when you know you're walking by faith. If you got to be seen with every little thing that you do, every little good deed that you do, like you're the only one that's ever done that, then you're walking by sight. Number 10, you don't let your emotions determine your decisions. You know, there are times when, especially in relationships, you guys, people let their emotions decide big moves for them. And that's a huge mistake because eventually you're going to calm down. But think about the fact that you've already made that big decision and you've already done something huge. Now you've calmed down. Now you're regretting it. That's why you don't make decisions when you're emotional. Don't make em make decisions when you're mad. Don't make decisions when you're uh when you're sad. And don't make decisions when you're overly happy about something or are overly excited about something you need to think before you move because everything we do you guys has consequences hey wendy whether good or bad we we have consequences so don't let your emotions guide your decisions use your wisdom take time to think about it i said in a podcast before don't let anybody pressure you to make a quick decision you know i i i'm learning now 
that you're not going to run up to me and, and say, well, can you do so and so and so and so? I need to know right now. No, you don't. I'm going to need you to move on to somebody else. I'll let you know tomorrow or I'll let you know in a couple of days. Take that time. You deserve it because that person is wanting a lot from you. They're wanting your time. They're wanting your energy and your spirit comes with that. So you don't know what you're going to get into sometimes when you're, when you're saying those quick yeses. And a lot of times that's why people press you because there's something more behind that. Anything that's good, it can wait. You can wait a day or so, or you can wait a, a week if I, if I decide it takes a week, if it's for me to do. Otherwise, go find somebody else. And don't be afraid to send people on their way and let them go ask somebody else to do some things. But don't ever let somebody pressure you to make you make a decision because that's all about them getting what they're wanting. It ain't about them protecting you. Eleven, prayer and worship come naturally, even spontaneously. Like I say, you guys, when you start walking by faith, you can just be having a regular conversation with somebody and then they start talking about the goodness of the Lord or they're talking about, you know, how, how they're so thankful, you know, that God brought them through this and that. But before you know it, y'all be having church. Y'all will be, tears will be flowing. That's when you know you're walking by faith. It doesn't have to be uh, scripted. You know, it, it it's nothing for, for a conversation to go from laughing about this or that and you start talking about the goodness of God, it'll just start coming out of you because that's what's in you. And definitely what's in you is going to come out. So it'll be more spontaneous uh, as you're walking by faith. And then the fruits of the Spirit, number 12, will begin to develop in you. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That'll all start developing in you. It'll just start coming naturally as you're walking by faith because that's what God intended us to be. So he's going to slowly be changing you from the inside. And a lot of times you won't even realize. You'll look back and say, you know what? Last year I would have went off about that. But for some reason it doesn't bother me like it used to. That's God. When you're walking by faith, he blocks you from all that nonsense because you get mature in your mind when you're walking with God. You understand that some stuff is just not on your level. Some stuff is not worth addressing and it's not worth worrying about. So what are some things that can deter us from walking by faith, you guys? Number one, this is the, the main one, is distractions. You know, distractions are anything that makes us lose our focus or makes us want to give up on what we're doing. You know, distractions, they have a way of harming our ability to listen and think carefully. When you're distracted, you don't make good decisions, you guys. And, and distractions keep you from being still. It keeps you from praying. It keeps you from meditating because a distraction is meant to waste your time. It's meant to waste your time so that you can't do what's important, so that you can't do what you set out to do. A distraction is there simply to, to make you want for something other than what you said you were going to do. So distractions are meant to, to, to harm us from being able to do the things that we set out to do. Two, fear. Fear makes us forget that God cares about us. You know, there are so many things going on in this world and I am guilty as anybody. I get scared sometimes because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, now what? You know, oh my gosh, what are we going to do about this? And then I have to calm myself down and say, you know what, God, you know, all of this, you knew all of it was going to happen. I said, help me to understand that. I just got to focus on you. I need to focus on you. You know, you said in your word, focus on what's good, what's lovely, what's a good report. Keep your mind on these things. And that's how he keeps you in a state of peace. But I'm like everybody else. I get scared. And then I have to remember that God would not bring me this far to leave me. 
and that he uh, he has a purpose for all this crazy stuff that's going on. I don't have to understand it. I just have to trust and believe that he's going to take care of me no matter what is going on. You know, we can we can fight out of fear and we can lose our faith, you know, and then sometimes we we shift our thinking because we're afraid. We have got to regroup and that's where that quiet time, that meditation time comes. Sometimes you just got to shut down all the noise and regroup and say, okay, God, I am tripping. I am panicking. I am worried about stuff that I know I shouldn't be worried about. Help me get back to a place of calmness. Help me get to a place of peace. And sometimes you just got to turn off the TV, turn off social media and and turn on some good music, whether it be gospel music or any other music. Sometimes you just need to get up and dance sometimes. Anything to take you back to your happy place, to that place where you feel safe, to that place where you feel like everything's going to be all right. Because God is going to watch over us. We have to believe that because he's done it up to this point so far. Number three, and the third thing that keeps us from walking by faith is our own desires, our own lusts. You know, we all have lust after things at one point or another, and some of us still do. You know, I lust after things sometimes, and I have to get myself back in line. But God said we would all be tempted. So that's a human thing. That doesn't mean that, you know, you're not as good as everybody else because we all sin. Because sin often, oftentimes sounds good. Sin always promises that it's going to be good, but it's usually temporary. So we all get caught up in that sometime. And I think about, you know, like the Ten Commandments, just the things that's listed in the Ten Commandments. And I said, you know, if we could just follow the Ten Commandments, our life would be so much simpler. We wouldn't have to face some of the consequences that we face. I said, every time that I've stepped outside of the Ten Commandments, I've had to deal with the negative consequences of it. So that's kind of like a blueprint you know, for your life, if you can manage to stay within those 10 commandments and do pretty good at, at doing those things, your life would be simpler. Your life would be better. And I'm sure that's why God um, gave us that because he didn't want us to have to go through a lot of stuff we go through because of our own selfish desires. So you guys, my final thought is while walking by faith doesn't mean walking through life, you know, with a blindfold on. We know stuff is happening around us. So, so it's not like we don't see that. But you don't let what you see control what you think or the decisions that you make. Because the truth of the matter is, whatever we have our eyes on will eventually change. It'll, it'll change. Everything that we see is changing. Nothing is the same as it was three years ago. Nothing is the same as it was 10 years ago. So whatever you're focusing on, if you're walking by sight, just understand it's going to change. The only thing that doesn't change is God. And so by choosing to walk by faith, we can experience peace, joy, and fulfillment in our lives. But we can overcome fear and doubt by tapping into God's strength. And he'll help us navigate through life. And like I say, it's some scary stuff going on, you guys. But that's why you have to spend your time worshiping God. Spend your time meditating with God. Let God know how you feel. Let God know that you're afraid. You know, he will give you the comfort that you need. And after all, we have to be careful how we walk, you guys, because somebody's always watching us. And I've said that before. People are constantly watching you and learning from you. Even when you don't see it, somebody's seeing what you do. So why don't we let the world see us walking by faith and not by sight? There's enough people out here trying to do everything everybody else is doing times 10. Why don't we be the difference? Why don't we be the ones that are stable in our minds, that are positive, that are trusting and leaning on God? You guys, let's say a quick prayer before we leave. 
Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your many blessings. Father God, we ask that you just cover us in your blood, Father God. God, help us in those times where we want to walk by sight. Remind us, God, that you are eternal. And if we keep our eyes on you, everything will be all right. That we don't have to fear, that we don't have to let anxiety and depression and things of that nature take over our life. If we keep our minds stayed on you, Father God, if we build our relationship with you, you will give us the strength we need to navigate through this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys. And I hope to see y'all next week. See y'all later. Bye. Love y'all.